But I guess my boss couldn't kept thinking about the whole situation at the bar. Echo is a really powerful thing. He then went on saying that we should have a problem hiring someone new to continue with the project. However, the hour department couldn't find anyone in that short period of time. So we lost a good chunk of time which meant that there is no way we can finish the project on time. So, unfortunately, the ambitious project was abandoned. Many months later, we found about a company in the same industry as us who developed this brilliant technology. It was basically a main concept with just a few things. I have been checked to see who was in charge of the project and surprise, surprise, it was the guy that got fired because he was flirting with the boss wife. Weeks after that, my boss received a letter saying only, told you that you are going to regret your decision. I was thinking that this guy really took it far because of failure to deliver the project and because the idea was stolen as revenge and the competition outrun us. We had to cut the budget and fire a few people. Fortunately, enough I was promoted because I was part of the company. I guess the moral of this I love about the right woman will not want to mess with the end guy. The company I was working in was planning to do a merge with another in the field for several months now. My department was big and we were told from the beginning that a part of us would most likely be fired and a small part would maybe be promoted. Everybody started working extra and trying to assure their place in the future company as it was a good job considering most of the 9 to 5s. And we would all do that, especially since everybody could tell more or less accurately which path will be chosen for most of us. Jeff was doing his job really well and fast and everyone started seeing the threat of him as everyone believed he was going to be promoted. Curiously though, Jeff was not putting in the extra work, and on top of that, one could say his dedication in the workplace had even dropped. We later found out this had to do with a personal matter, something about a family member being seriously ill. Nonetheless, his productivity dropped drastically and so when time finally came to find out the new changes, I had luckily kept my job, but Jeff was fired. The office quickly split in a few sides. Some said they were shocked, and had expected, that his good skills were way more than a rough patch. Some said he deserved it, and had it coming, and some even said, that he should have been promoted. But none of this mattered as we later found out, that the decisions made, weren't taken by the bigger positions of the company, as everyone thought, but by our department's boss and team leader which was a dreadful person. Only then the whole department agreed that the decision wasn't a humane one, as everyone knew that our boss had only done this from lack of empathy and understanding towards Jeff's problem. Jeff was devastated. This was truly the last thing he needed on his plate, and had left the office in a dramatic fight with our boss, saying over and over that he did not deserve this, and that we will hear from you again. A few months go by, and I'm reading the local news on the bus I take to commute to work back home. I can say I was sunk, rather than surprised as I was reading a headline that implied a really serious lawsuit against our boss for abuse of power and breach of conduct. I couldn't believe what I was reading. I had been working at the company for quite some time now, and had never encountered a situation like that. The article stated that the lawsuit was filed by more than half of the members of the department. I later found out that this information was completely true, and that nobody said anything because they wanted to keep their jobs. Evidently, the mastermind behind all this was Jeff, which has now managed to solve his personal problems, and begun focusing on getting his job back, and, of course, getting revenge over his former boss. He managed to do that with flying colors, as our boss was firstly suspended, and then fired for good, when it was proven in court that the accusations were true. The company stated a public apology, and claimed they had no idea this situation was taking place in their company. Moreover, in order to prove this, they offered Jeff, of all people, the open place in the company, and gave him a raise. Nicely played, Jeff. Little did we know he was going to be one of the best bosses we could have asked for. Had an employee who was sneaking out from the office. Everyone on the floor thought he was cheating as he told the secretary that, if his wife calls to tell her he's in a meeting. Also, that occurred quite regularly, at the same hour on the same day. It was getting kind of obvious, but nobody said anything, because it wasn't our job to interfere. One time. What's the best way you've gotten back at a dickhead boss slash cowgirl? At the age of 15, 
I was doing humble freelance work designing a restaurant menu for a small business owned by family members. The owner insisted I would email the entire completed menu just to look at it. I was told a printed copy didn't cut it. I had not yet received any payment, and they made it pretty clear they just wanted to start printing copies and not pay me. So, I make the entire menu have the watermark superimposed on it. Not with my name, not with a logo, with the word poop. I explained that it would be removed when I got my money, which I did. I worked as an installer in a remote office. I traveled a lot for work, often spending weekends on site. This was fine under my old boss, who gave me a lot of leeway by letting me work from home, gave me calm time, etc. After four years, I got a new boss. Also, the company laid off everyone in my office, about 100 people. New boss insisted I come in anyway, a 45 minute drive, to sit in an empty office. But I still, had to travel Sunday through Friday, with no overtime, and no calm time. When I complained to hours, the hour manager told me that since I'm salaried, if they wanted me to work 80 hours a week, I would work 80 hours and I shouldn't expect any compensation. Everyone I talked to seemed to think this was true. Salaried equals slash equals get overtime. This didn't make sense to me. I called the local state debt of labor office, told them what I did, what i have been told. They told me to get a lawyer, and if they didn't rectify this, for every dollar they owed me, they would have to pay the state 50 cents in penalties, which is what I did. In a matter of four months, I settled out of court, got a new job, got a severance, and made my boss do an exit interview, where I told her, if she'd been halfway considerate and legally complained, she wouldn't have to scramble to cover for the next state scheduled, installed by flying people out from the east coast, and paying them overtime. Worked in a bakery slash lunch and sandwich shop slash coffee bar. I worked in the back as a baker. I took the orders from all the smaller coffee shops around town that the local chain owned and baked all the bagels, cookies, muffins, wraps, etc. Occasionally we had catering orders to do which added a significant chunk of time onto my day. My asshole boss didn't feel it was necessary to tell me about them until the last possible moment. There's a lot of prep work that goes into making a thousand ham and cheese sandwiches. Prep work that can be done days in advance. Things like slicing all the cheese and meat, or mixing our own mustard. He didn't give a fuck. If I stayed until 3 a.m. on a school night, I was in high school. Most of the time I didn't care that he broke child labor laws. I kind of wanted the job. But finally the straw that broke the camel's back was the third catering order he didn't tell me about a week in advance, like he should have. It was a huge, important luncheon for the company itself, feeding over 3,000 people. I had to make hundreds of baked goods and sandwiches, and about 30 quarts of three types of soups. He told me about all of this 18 hours, before it had to be loaded into a truck, and delivered to the event. I sided him and said I'd take care of it, but I called him an asshole for not telling me a week in advance. I can make the soup and refrigerate it, all sorts of things, to cut down on my workload. I had a test the next day and I wanted to study. This was at 5 p.m. the day before. He left for the day. I was the only one capable of making all the food that were on staff. I told everyone else on staff what he did, and since there's a mutual hatred among my co-workers, they all agreed not to tell him the next thing I did. I walked out without preparing and once of food. I left a note on the table in the back, calling him an inept moron incapable of managing a simple lunch diner and incapable of being a social person. I suggested he be more considerate and kind to his employees, should he demand such respect from them. I walked out and quit. Not even two weeks notice. Fuck that guy. When I came back for my paycheck a week later he tried to intimidate me in his office while handwriting my check. He said name, you know, that's not the best way to make friends. I replied, yeah, I generally try to make friends by being nice and respecting people. You should take lessons from me. I was the smartest kid. As far as I know he got fired for letting 3,000 people go hungry at a huge corporate event. Only kind of related, but had a verbally abusive boss who would make physically impossible demands and thought she was queen of the workplace.
which she was caused her supervisors let her do what it's about. Even after I reported all this, so during one of the tantrums in which about 12 hours of work is being laid on me at 4 p.m., that has to be done by tomorrow, I tell her, fine I quit, you can't quit, you have to give two weeks notice. What? No I don't. Goodbye and good luck with all that work, that needs to be done before tomorrow. Very satisfying. I made a girl fat, and not by marrying her. In 2003, my office got a new secretary and a new manager. The secretary, or thin blonde, was a vile she devil. She wouldn't do anything the staff asked. Find info, set up calls, get coffee for anyone who wasn't herself, and the manager wouldn't do anything about it. We joked that her job title was Internet Quality Control, because she more or less sent personal email, and played on this base all day. To which when she overheard, literally went to the manager in tears. Then one day I got a rather large jar of candy as a gift and she just about single-handedly consumed half of it. Which pissed me off good. <coughs> that week, I brought in a dozen donuts and she ate half of them on her own. Upon putting the facts together, our web designer, editor and I decided to fuel the fire in something we called Operation Butter Up where we each in turn brought in a large bag of candy to fill up my jar as fast as she could empty it. In the course of three months, she put on 20 pounds. Huh? In a year's time, she unrecognizable and along with being a crack. Huh?